Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News on iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Happy Holidays to everyone. It's been a great day here in the Dwyer household. Online, many people are talking about 2014. And um, they're talking about what they thought was the fight of the year, the fighter of the year, and all that good stuff. Let's put a different spin on it, and let's just be silly. Let's be completely <laughs> reckless. <laughs> let's act without responsibility. Let's just boldly go where the film hasn't even taken us. Let's just make predictions on some of the big events in boxing for 2015. Before I do, let me just comment briefly on 2014. Uh, I thought the biggest event in boxing for 2014, a fight that delivered on the hype, right? It was an event before the fight. It was an event during the fight. It was an event after the fight. Right, if there was one fight looking back that I wish I was at ringside of, it would be Carl Frotch's KO win over George Groves. If you haven't seen the fight, I would encourage you to look at the film, not just of the fight, but of the presentation, even before they get in the ring. David Hay is one of the commentators. Uh, they're fighting in a big arena. I believe it was Wembley. Uh, you could sense the electricity. Um, boxing delivers like few other sports during moments like that. In my opinion, the most intriguing fight, the fight where I looked at it beforehand and thought, who's going to win this fight? I didn't know. Right? I didn't have a clue. Then the uh, fight starts and you're looking at the fight and you're trying to read it and... Um, you understand the talent levels of both men. For me personally, the most intriguing fight of 2014, and it was a masterful performance, was in the heavyweight division. Alexander Povetkin versus Tarlos Takam. Takam had beaten Tony Thompson convincingly. Uh, both of these fighters are underrated. Uh, Povetkin is really one of the better heavyweights in recent memory. He had a bad night against Vladimir Klitschko, very high profile fight. Many people have written him off. I encourage you to look at the film of Povetkin against Takam. You're going to see athleticism. You're going to see a lot of big punches thrown by two heavyweights. Uh, you're going to see what makes Alexander Povetkin special. You know, I'm looking forward to what Povetkin's next moves are. You'll notice. Guys like Antonio Tarver are calling out other heavyweights. He hasn't mentioned Alexander Povetkin's name. There's a reason, right? Technicians understand talent when they see it. Finally, and I know this is going to be controversial. The most talented fighter I saw, right? The guy who actually was able to translate his talent into his performances the best at the highest level was super middleweight James DeGale understand he is very high level understand he has power that Floyd Mayweather has not had recently understand DeGale has been ending fights against credible opponents by KO the fights look like mismatches, right? And then you go back and you do forensics and you say, wow, Brandon Gonzalez was an excellent fighter. <laughs> Brandon Gonzalez was unbeaten. Then you look at Marco Antonio Paribas and you say, wow, didn't he go the distance with Saki Obika? Didn't he put down Jelly and Love on the canvas? How did this ending happen? Then as you watch the fights, you understand that you're dealing with, really, a master. 
A guy who can just change the angles on his punches, who can go wide when he needs to. He's not even married to being orthodox and accurate. Right? He's the guy who will, you know, do things that are outside the strike zone. Right? Um, just look at James DeGale's body of work for 2014. I understand he doesn't have a title. Who cares? Right? This guy is one of the best in boxing. Now let's talk about 2015. And understand this is just guessing. In fact, hell, most of the stuff I'm doing here online is guessing, right? This is just rampant speculation on my part, right? In my opinion, in May of 2015, Floyd Mayweather was going to hop in the ring with Manny Pacquiao. I think what happens next is going to be controversial. I'm expecting the fight to take place not in Dubai, but in Las Vegas, right? Why? Because Mayweather is comfortable in Las Vegas. He understands the premium that he would get by traveling across the Atlantic isn't worth the risk of the unfamiliarity involved. Lord knows in Vegas he'd be getting paid enough as it is. Right? Understand Mayweather is a person who has more than a hundred million dollars in the bank. Right? At some point the extra zeros really don't matter. So I'm expecting this fight to be in Las Vegas, right? I'm expecting the boxing establishment to support it because the promoters know how to promote in Las Vegas, right? Uh, everyone knows the fight's going to be pub big time, right? There's going to be a lot of tourism dollars. So I'm expecting Mayweather to fight Pacquiao. The first four rounds of the fight, I'm expecting Manny Pacquiao to come out and to win three of the four rounds. Mayweather, a Las Vegas native, right? I know he's from Michigan. He's living in Vegas now, has been for years. The Mayweather gym's in Vegas, right? I'm expecting him to find out that his hometown is actually a Manny Pacquiao town. I'm expecting the crowd to be chanting, Manny, 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 Manny. The key question on the night after Floyd loses three of the first four rounds, after Floyd finds that he's having a little bit of a problem figuring out the hand speed gap, and there is a hand speed gap. Manny Pacquiao today has faster hand speed than Floyd Mayweather. The question is going to be, does Floyd win six of the last eight rounds? Mayweather certainly is going to hit the gas and in my opinion is going to start dominating the fight. The question is going to be whether Mayweather banks enough rounds on the back end to offset the rounds Manny Pacquiao banks on the front end. I'm expecting the judges in this fight that goes the distance to vote that the fight is either a majority decision or a split decision. At least 40% of the public is firmly going to believe that Manny Pacquiao has won the fight. Right? Whoever gets their hand raised at the end, and I'm expecting it to be Floyd. Right? You know, I'm sure on my scorecard Mayweather's going to win probably eight rounds. Because the things I like to see or what Mayweather does, right? I prefer two hands to one hand. I appreciate great defense. I appreciate great body work. I'm one of those guys who can't understand how Mauricio Herrera keeps coming up on the losing end of these decisions after banking body shots over the course of 12 rounds, right? But, I'm guessing the public is going to see the outcome as controversial, whichever way it goes. And I expect Mayweather to exercise his rematch clause. And then we get the big farewell fight between Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao in September of 2015. And at that point, Mayweather will know exactly what to expect. From Pacquiao speed-wise, Mayweather will come out and dominate. For a blueprint on how I think the fight goes, take a look at Mayweather against Zab Judah.
right? Judah comes out and dominates the early rounds. It's much faster than Mayweather hand speed wise. Mayweather makes the adjustment and dominates the latter part of the fight. Understand though, Zab Judah doesn't have Manny Pacquiao's legs. Right? An argument can be made that Zab Judah doesn't have Manny Pacquiao's sudden power. Right? There's a suddenness to Pacquiao's game. I believe the only person Mayweather fights in 2015, and I'm just a boxing outsider like everyone else. I'm just guessing. I believe the only person Mayweather fights in 2015 is Manny Pacquiao. Now, I believe Terrence Crawford at lightweight just gets tired of draining himself to make weight. I believe Crawford also looks at 140 and says, hey, you know what? There isn't enough of a challenge here. Right? I believe Crawford jumps to 147 and decides to fight a big name. Let's say Marcus Maidana or Keith Thurman. Now, I believe in the fight, Terrence Crawford gets dropped. But I believe Crawford gets up off the canvas. Sometimes these are the big moments in the sport. I believe Crawford gets off the canvas and goes on to win the fight. I believe the growing group, they're not in the majority yet, but I believe the growing group that feels that this man is special get vindicated. I believe by the end of the year, people are going to start viewing Crawford like they used to view Nanito Denier as an uncrowned champion. You're going to understand that Crawford's talent level is huge. That Crawford is the kind of guy who can get hit with bombs and get off the canvas. Let's shift gears to the heavyweight division. Now, I believe new daddy Vladimir Klitschko, right, who curiously hasn't been smack talk like he would have been in the 70s. You can imagine in the 70s, a guy like Ali bringing a banjo to a press conference, right, knowing that Vladimir Klitschko's girlfriend, the mother of his child, Hayden Pantieri, is one of the stars in Nashville. And you can imagine Ali singing Nashville songs challenging Klitschko to a fight. Now, unfortunately, in 2014, we don't have any heavyweights with that sense of humor, right? These guys today don't know how to trash talk. Only David Hay seems to know how to really trash talk at a press conference. Well, let's say this. I believe new daddy Vladimir Klitschko continues his reign, right? I think he beats Brian Jennings. I think Klitschko quite frankly, hunts down Brian Jennings, right? I think Klitschko then takes on the winner of Deontay Wilder versus Bermain Stavern. Now understand, I believe Wilder is the better athlete than Stavern. I believe Stavern is the better boxer. I believe Stavern is the technician between these two. Now somebody with the height, right? the legs of a Deontay Wilder who knew what he was doing would just keep Stavern on the end of a jab, would move around the ring, would keep distance, would use left. Because one of the secrets in Wilder versus Stavern is it's debatable who hits harder. Remain Stavern is one of the hardest punchers in the sport of boxing. I know Wilder has a 100% KO ratio. Trust me. Both guys hit hard. I'm a skeptic of Wilder. I don't believe he knows what he's doing. I don't think Wilder has the skills to keep Stavern outside. In fact, I don't even think Wilder has the back foot game to stay outside. I think Stavert is going to come in the ring. I think Stavert's slow foot speed convinces opponents to hunt him down. One of the biggest hitters in the sport. And I'm expecting Deontay Wilder to get stopped. Right? 
So then I believe there's going to be a buildup for Klitschko versus Stavern. Klitschko knows how to use laps. I think that's a dull fight. I think Klitschko is able to stay outside, shoot a jab, throw his own power shots. I think Vladimir Klitschko makes it through 2015 as the heavyweight champ. The only thing that might KO him is fatherhood. He might decide that he would rather stay home with his child and his woman rather than getting in the ring with hard-hitting heavyweights, right? Lord knows Klitschko's made enough money. Let's talk about the middleweight division. This will be probably the most controversial part of this video. And keep in mind, I'm speculating rapidly here, right? I believe Sergio Martinez retires. Keep in mind, I view Sergio Martinez as one of the best middleweights I've ever seen. Right? But I believe Martinez is too much of a renaissance man to continue on in the sport in his 40s. Right? Martinez is a guy with a lot of different interests. He's really interested in current events. He knows his knee is not 100%. He knows he's had other health problems. He knows that the version of himself that lost to Miguel Cotto would lose badly to the Sergio Martinez of five years ago. So I believe Martinez retires. Then, I believe Miguel Cotto goes on a reign of terror through the middleweight division. I think Cotto, given this group of middleweights, is going to be even more effective, even deadlier, than Miguel Cotto was at 147 pounds. Understand, Cotto used to drain himself to make weight. I believe the Cotto Pacquiao fight, and you'll have to confirm this for me, was at a catch weight. Right? Cotto at middleweight is a revelation because Cotto is shorter than some of these taller middleweights. Compare and contrast his height to Peter Quillen, his height to Danny Jacobs, right? I believe Cotto is shorter than these guys. I believe Cotto has better foot speed and balance than these guys. I believe a guy like Peter Quillen really hasn't been hit in the rib cage as hard as he would be hit by Miguel Cotto. I believe the Cotto you saw against Austin Trout pre-Freddie Roach is not the Cotto post-Freddie Roach that exists today. I think Cotto's going to stun all of us. I think Cotto is already a Hall of Famer. I think Cotto starts to run through the middleweight division. Right? Whether it's Saul Alvarez, whether it's Danny Jacobs, or whether it's Peter Quillen. I think Cotto is going to exceed expectations, right? It's going to be like the heavyweights back in the day, fighting 205-pound Joe Fraser, right? Guy's bobbing and weaving. He's not really in front of you. Suddenly, he's up on you. That left hand is lethal. It's cracking your ribs. You're getting hit hard. You can't find him. When's the last time you saw Peter Quillen dealing with a guy right up on him. Cotto's going to be hard for these taller guys to clinch, right? You're going to be moving down trying to clinch him. Cotto is too savvy to stand in front of a big guy and let the guy hug him to death. I think Miguel Cotto at 160 is something we need to keep an eye on, right? Janady Golovkin is fighting Martin Murray. Right, so he's tied up for the first part of 2015. I believe that by the end of 2015, the public is going to be demanding that he fight Miguel Cotto, something that we view as out there right now. But keep in mind, Cotto is a lot like Vladimir Klitschko. 
These are guys who've already made their reputations, right? They've already left a mark on the sport, right? Understand when you're dealing with guys like this, who have already put in work, who can already, you know, go to the Ukraine or go to Puerto Rico and get VIP treatment for the rest of their lives. Understand this personality type is the kind of type that could walk away from the game, right? Miguel Cotto is a daredevil. There's going to be a time where he looks at Mount Everest and says, I've climbed enough mountains, right? So really the ball is in Cotto's court. I know Golden Boy right now has an offer to Cotto to fight Saul Alvarez, right? I'm expecting big things from Miguel Cotto. Let's segue to the light heavyweight division. In my opinion, somebody's going to get knocked out badly in the John Pascal Sergei Kovalev fight. I'm just not sure who it is. Both of these guys hit hard enough where if you blink, you might miss the knockout, right? Then the winner is going to fight it on a Stevenson. Let's just say I'm expecting the winner of that fight to get KO, right? Understand, light heavy right now has some big hitters. Few guys in that division are trying to get decisions, right? If I had to pick a side, I would say that Stevenson is going to lose his crown, right? I would say the winner of Pascal versus Kovalev beats Adonis Stevenson, who to me really is Manny Pacquiao's brother, right? Jumps around, has a great straight left hand, not much of a right, knockout cause amnesia, we see him drill people with that left. They can't survive it, right? He doesn't quite have Manny Pacquiao's foot speed. I'll agree with that, right? He's not as quick as Manny Pacquiao, but understand, he's able to hide himself a bit, right? I expect Stevenson to lose his title at light heavyweight. Okay, now finally, in fact, I have a couple more. Let's talk super middleweight. I believe 168 is rapidly becoming a family affair. I believe this is going to lead to international tension between the United States and Great Britain because of one family. Right? Understand, here in the United States, Andre Ward is involved in litigation with Goosen Promotions. Right? So he's been on ice a bit. What has happened is because the dominant fighter at 168 in the United States has been on ice, that has given other guys an opportunity to shine. Right? I need to have people take a hard look at the current version of Andre Durrell. Right? This version of Andre Durrell is the best Andre Durrell has ever been. He's cut down a bit on the movement. He has more power. He has a better understanding of distance. He has a better understanding of how to fight inside. The time away from the ring has helped him tremendously. He looks healthy. He wants Carl Frotch. I think he beats Carl Frotch if the two of them ever fight. Frotch holds a lot of the keys in this division, right? You just heard me say I thought Frotch had the event of 2014, right? The problem Andre Durrell has, and it's a big problem, is that it's debatable whether he's the best at 168 in his own family. His brother Anthony Durrell has a belt. According to rumors, Anthony Durrell is supposed to fight George Groves. I think Anthony Durrell beats George Groves. Right? Anthony Durrell is major. Right? So, you have Andre calling out Carl Frotch. Keep in mind, Andre fought Carl Frotch. In Nottingham, Carl Frotch's backyard. 
that fight was a close fight. Let's just say that fight is closer than any fight between Frotch and George Groves. Right? Uh, here online, years ago, I picked Frotch to win that fight. After that fight, I came on here and I... Both videos are still up. I conceded that while I picked Frotch to win the fight, I myself knew after watching the fight that Andre Durrell had won that fight. The problem is a fight between Anthony Durrell and Carl Frotch, right, would be a unification match. Not only that, if Anthony Durrell beats George Groves, isn't Carl Frotch the next logical person to fight? Now, the reason why this gets international, the reason why you need to know about this division is that, in my opinion, the best 168-pounder in the UK is not Carl Frotch. It's James DeGale. And it's my belief that the legal issues between Andre Ward and Goosen Promotions will eventually be resolved. Then, of course, there is the other factor. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., Right? And I believe sooner or later, because of the money involved, his disagreement with top rank is going to be resolved. So what you have here is really a family situation. I know the brothers love each other, but let's just say they both want the same things at 168 pounds. Anthony Durrell is not satisfied with one belt. Right? Right? Then you have the situation of what's happening in the UK. James DeGale wants Carl Frotch. Carl Frotch is saying he wants to fight in the United States, but of course, Chavez Jr. is having promotional problems. Andre Ward is having promotional problems. Here's what I think is going to happen. Here's the one fight I am going to call here. I like Anthony Durrell over George Groves. I think George Groves has been Cobra. I think the guy with the biggest fingerprints here at 168, who's not on ice, is Carl Frotch, right? I'm expecting the Durrells to try to take over the United Kingdom. I'm expecting Carl Frotch, right, to call out one of them. I'm expecting the fans to call out one of them. Why do I think Carl calls out one of them? Because in my opinion, Carl knows that he loses to James DeGale. And Carl wants to be the king of England. He wants to be the top dog, not second fiddle. Finally, let's shift gears. Let's go down to featherweight. Vassal Lomachenko. Wow, he looks good, doesn't he? Wow, his amateur pedigree Looks spectacular, doesn't it? What could possibly go wrong? Let me offer three names. I believe Vasyl Lomachenko gets dropped by Pick Your Poison, Johnny Gonzalez, Nicholas Walters, Abner Maris. Now the question for me and it is a big question, is what happens after he gets dropped? Something tells me that Terrence Crawford, who I mentioned earlier in this video, gets off the canvas. Right? I've seen Terrence Crawford hit hard. I've seen his mentality. Vasyl Lomachenko was getting hit with a lot of low blows by Orlando Salido. A lot of low blows. Right? I didn't see the retaliation. He hasn't had a lot of pro fights. I view the pros as a different country than the amateurs. Right? I question what happens if he gets dropped by one of these guys. Let me point out, too. Johnny Gonzalez. 
It's been a personal favorite of mine for a long time. This guy's a Hall of Famer. Look at his KO ratio. Right? You don't recover against Johnny Gonzalez. You just don't. Gonzalez has had a problem against punchers. Right? Because Gonzalez's chin isn't the best. In many ways, he's kind of like Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Looks great if he gets hit on the chin. Oh, it gets a little dicey. But Lomachenko doesn't hit that hard. Gonzalez is a guy who can box. He's not just a puncher. So I believe that Gonzalez is probably the most interesting guy for me at featherweight. Right? Nicholas Walters looks spectacular. No question about it. But Walters doesn't have the resume of Johnny Gonzalez. And in my opinion, Gonzalez is the better boxer. Right? If Lomachenko wants to be the best, and if he fights one of these men, I think he's going to run into more resistance than he has in any other fight. Abner Maris looks great of late. Right? He looks great of late. Right? I'm guessing that Maris, who threw too many low blows against Joseph Agbeko, would come in with a body attack, front foot heavy, just like he fought Agbeko against Lomachenko. Right? Let's keep an eye on featherweight. I'll say this. If Lomachenko is able to hold his own against Gonzalez, Walters, and Maris, then you're looking at a rare, great fighter. Not just a great talent, but a guy who has done great things. Those are my guesses for 2015. Let me open the door and let's hear yours. Right, I've deliberately, not accidentally, but I've deliberately stayed away from some divisions. Carl Frampton... I'm still trying to figure out what's going on there, right? Cruiserweight, I'm still trying to figure out what's going on there, <laughs> right? There are many divisions where, hey, you know, it's over my head. But these are the predictions I'm making for these divisions. Let me hear yours. Don't keep your comments limited. Let's open it up to all the divisions in boxing. Tell us what you think if you feel that one of the guys I've I'm been touting here, let's say a Vladimir Klitschko, a James DeGale, right, a Johnny Gonzalez, if you feel that these guys have issues, right, Floyd Mayweather, Miguel Cotto, right, if you feel these guys aren't as good as I'm representing here, then give us the other side of the coin, give us your perspective. I hope you leave the comments here in the comment section to this video. Happy New Year and thanks for stopping by.